This is a GCSE video about mass, weight and density. The reason that we don't all go floating off into space is because of gravity. Gravity pulls us down to the center of the Earth. Gravity is always pulling in the direction of the center of the Earth. And when we um, go to the bathroom and get on the weighing scales, we weigh ourselves. And it's the weighing someone is, or weighing a thing, is a measurement of how much force gravity is putting on us. Usually we use something like this, and if I was to find how heavy this block was, then I could just put it on some scales. Now, the reading here is not actually telling us the weight. This is telling us the mass. Now, mass is always measured in physics in kilograms. Weight, remember, is a force and forces are always measured in newtons. Now, gravity is not a mass or a weight. Gravity is the thing that pulls everything towards the center of the Earth. And we've got an equation that can link gravity and mass and weight together. We know that if someone is heavier, if someone has more mass, then gravity pulls them down with a greater force and we can say that the weight w is the mass m times gravity g now remember weight is in newtons mass is in kilograms and so gravity can be measured in newtons per kilogram on earth we generally say at GCSE level that gravity is equal to 10 newtons per kilogram. What that means is that if you have one kilogram of mass, then there is 10 newtons of force pulling that down towards the center of the Earth. If you have two kilograms mass, then there are 20 newtons of force pulling it down towards the center of the Earth. Now, gravity can also be imagined as an acceleration. And so sometimes, in some questions, instead of saying gravity is newtons per kilogram, gravity is referred to as an acceleration of freefall. And what that means is that if you drop something out of a plane or out of a window, then free fall is when it is falling with no upwards force trying to slow it down. So the acceleration of free fall is the same as gravity and we use 10 for it. It's just got slightly different units because the units for acceleration are meters per second squared. But it's all the same. It's all gravity. It's either something to do with the weight and the mass or it can be thought of as an acceleration but it's all the same it's all the number 10 and it's all gravity so all you need to remember really is that gravity is 10. Now there are some important differences between mass and weight you already know one of them from the previous piece of paper and that is that mass is measured in kilograms Weight is measured in Newtons. Now another important difference is that when you go to space and you're, you see astronauts floating around, their weight is zero. There's no force on them. There's no force pulling them down. Their mass, however, doesn't change. That's because their mass is a measurement of the number of particles they're made up of.
So if the same person stands on Earth and then goes to space, the number of particles they've made up, they're made up of has not changed. They're still the same size person, they're still made of the same number of particles. Their weight, however, the force pulling them downwards, if you're in space or on the moon, is much less. And so the weight is the force due to gravity. Okay, and that's the most important difference, that the mass doesn't change and the weight does change. For example, in space. Now the mass leads us on to talking about another thing, and that is density. Now you can see these two objects, one of them is a pen and one of them is a piece of metal. Um, here we've got some scales, so we can find out the mass of each one. Now if I put the pen on the scales, 15 grams, hopefully you can see that. If I put the piece of metal on the scales, that's 162 grams. Now these objects are very similar in size, so why is this one so much heavier than this one? Well, the answer comes down to density. The pen is made of plastic and it's got some air in there as well. It's got some of this felt stuff in there to help it write. So the particles in the pen, because of the type of material that it's made from and the fact that there's a lot of air in there as well, are quite spread out on average. They're, mo they're not moving around because it's a solid, but the particles are quite far away from each other. Also, um, plastic is made mostly from carbon and hydrogen, and if you look at your periodic table, you'll see that carbon and hydrogen have atomic masses that are much lower than a lot of the metals. Now this metal is, I think, probably iron or steel, and iron has a much heavier atomic mass. So each atom, each particle in the iron, is heavier than the particles in the pen. Now also, the particles here are much closer together. They're metal ions, they're closer together, and they're surrounded by a sea of delocalized electrons. You probably know that from chemistry. If you don't know that from chemistry, don't worry, you don't need to know that specific type of bonding for physics. But you do need to know that in a metal, the particles are closer together than they are in a plastic, and also each one of those atoms is heavier than there are atoms in the plastic. In fact, a carbon atom has an atomic mass of 12, a hydrogen atom has an atomic mass of 1, but an iron atom has an atomic mass of 56. So each one of the atoms inside this metal bar weighs four or five times more than the average atom inside the pen. So, this metal bar has more mass per unit volume. It has more mass in the same amount of space. Now we can use a very simple equation for this, and that is density, which is represented by this Greek letter rho, is mass divided by volume. And remember, mass is always in kilograms, volume is always in meters cubed. Density, therefore, is in kilograms per meter cubed. So if we want to work that out for a relatively simple shape, like this block, we could find the mass, 93 grams, and then we could measure the block, we could measure it here, and here, and here, and we could calculate the volume of the block quite easily, the width times the depth times the height, and then we could use that volume that we work out, we could do mass divided by volume and work out the density. Quite simple. However, if you have a complicated shape like this with these ridges and it's, you know, it's, it's not the easiest shape to work out, or even more difficult, the pen, because it's got space inside it and stuff like that, you can use a slightly different method. And that method is called water displacement. It's still very easy to get the mass, 
162 grams so we've got the mass but we need to find out the volume to work out the density of this object now we can do that just using a simple measuring cylinder and into this measuring cylinder you can see that I have put 50 millilitres of water. This is just regular water, I've just put some food colouring in it so it's easier to see. Now, if I put in the piece of metal into the water, like this, then you can see that the level of the water has now gone up to about 71 millilitres. So it's gone from 50 to 71 millilitres. So that means that 21 millilitres has just been added to the measuring cylinder. Now that 21 millilitres I know is my iron bar. And I also know that one millilitre is one centimetre cubed. So now I know that my iron bar, the volume of my iron bar is 21 centimeters cubed now remember we want volume in meters cubed so we have to change that from centimeters cubed to meters cubed and the way we do that is by dividing by one million so 21 divided by 1 million is 0 0.00021 so that is my volume in meters cubed of my iron bar. And I found out the mass earlier, which was 162 grams. And remember we want that in kilograms, so that's 0 0.162 kilograms. So now we can work out the density, which is the mass divided by the volume, so 0 0.162 divided by 0 0.000021, and that will give us the density of our iron bar. Now you can do this with any material, you just need to find its mass in kilograms and its volume in meters cubed. Sometimes you can measure the volume, sometimes you need to use water displacement.